What is up my streaming twins? How are you all doing? And welcome back to From the Depths where today we are in the designer mode. We are standing on a mannequin and that means that the latest dev test has been released. Which means we now have multi-threading. And I have to say the performance increase is absolutely and utterly epic. But... <laughs> but it does come with a few issues but remember it is the dev test and as soon as i was finding some issues i was on discord and they were just getting fixed one after the other one after the other and so yeah everything you know it's it's working out they're working on it it's getting improved and the updates are coming out constantly well nearly constantly <laughs> but anyway I have been very, 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 very busy off cam. I have saved up a number of resources in our main campaign and set up a fortress, which I'm going to show you just now. Alright, so this is our new fortress. It is hell of an expensive, but I have actually spent a hell of a lot of time in the campaign as we've removed the deep water guard pretty much. I've only been attacked very, very, very infrequently. From the deep water guard, they would have what I know. I had a Franklin popping up. Oh, Jesus, the camera. So, this is our fort. We are using the stupid, <laughs> the stupidly long, stupid shell that I have on our um, Theme Doodle flagship, which we shall be also bringing in the campaign today. Um, we have a flak and a frag for the Sea Wiz, they are on time fuses. We have our oil refinery, which is pretty um, efficient. I believe this is the max efficient max efficiency since you can get. We also have a little steam jenny over here for our batteries, just in case, because they do tend to um, get a little bit on the empty side once we are under attack. More so with the lambs. We have a couple, couple of. Um, ammo storages oh jesus yeah a couple of ammo storages like this we have a little shieldy thing on the top of this one on the other one i've yet to do it um this is our sea wiz over here or our anti-air anti-missile sea wiz i guess um nothing special about that over here we have the sam and the sam i should show you how this thing works in a mo because it's quite interesting at least I found it quite interesting. We have a mix of frags and EMPs. So we have EMPs and we have frag missiles. Uh, another ammo case that I have to arm up properly. Over here we have our engine. This is the same engine that I'm using inside our flagship. Um, in our flagship we have two of these running. So, on the deck, this is something I'd like to know about. Perhaps you guys could tell me. How would you armor these things up? And how would you actually set them up? Um, you know, on your on your decks and so on. These are for anti-crams, mostly. Uh, each, each one of those set of nodes has this set up. It has two of these. Like that. Uh, set up for those. Uh, that's the sort of output that we are getting from from those. So we have, you know, these two attached to um, the nodes up above, and we have about eight nodes, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we have eight nodes. So we do tend to eat up the uh, the battery power quite quickly there. Uh, our mainframe stuff. And again, more of these things. Um, boom, boom, boom. Down here we have, which I have yet to link up properly. Which I will do so, you know, off camera, during the campaign, you know, when, when everything's a little bit chill like it currently is. Uh, so this is our turret. Our turret is uh, um, it's a rail. And it's using pretty much the same setup as the one on our flagship. However, this is a triple barrel the flagship it's a double barrel and for once I'm finally using these guys I've never used these things before so that's pretty damn neat and they do come in handy um, bom, bom, bom. so over here this is a whole belt this whole this whole ring wrapped around here as you can see there is a gap 
This is all attached to the turret itself. This is the turret. This whole thing is the whole turret. Um, inside this, as you can see, it's a mix of heavy armor, stone, and metal. So you have metal going out throughout, you know, on the back, just so you know, for mostly eye candy. Then we have the stone, the heavy, the heavy armor, the metal, and you know, the slopey bits. So that's pretty much going all the way around. Only here on the front is a pretty much solid um, heavy armor. I have to also install a couple of shields as well. So that is that on this guy. Um, this is the sort of gauge we're going with. 215. So that is that. And then our little sea wizards over here. That's the sort of gauge we're going with. The 71. I think I got this, you know, some of this information from the Discord. Um, you know, just having a quick chat. Okay, so I'm going to show you this thing in action because I, I just tried it and the camera was somewhere, God knows where else it was. So, what you're going to see is, you know, things are going to start to move a little bit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn in a uh, Kingstead because it's going to last longer than a goddamn Marauder. So as you can see, that pops down and slides in. I need to set the timing up properly so it doesn't glitch through the whole Sammy, the Sammy Sight thing. Um, that's the King's dead. <laughs> I don't dare. So as you can see here, yeah, it's we don't even have a shield, so it's pretty much hitting our armor here. The only problem is if we have you know uh, air targets um, against us, this whole uh, platform here has to be reinforced underneath. We do have. Uh, the wood, the metal, and then there's like an air gap or two. But I do need to put in um, probably another layer of heavy armor. That's for sure. But as you can see, where our lambs are keeping up, except look at our battery power, it is it's pretty much drained. And that really isn't good because our, our rails is using the, the, the power. And then our lambs are also going to start to have issues. You can see this one. Well, that's kind of. It's charging up. It's charging up. So that is that against the Kingstead. As you can see, the Kingstead really hasn't done much to us. And yeah, we're giving it a good, a good beating. Okay, so some of the issues that we do get with this guy is, let's say we have a mix of things. Well, actually, it's not because there's a mix of things. It's because they're there, the, the air targets and the cramps coming down on top of our decking over here. Uh, like this, we can also get to see our little sea wizards uh, in action, kind of. So they are on time fuse. They are set to detonate, you know, before the, the target. What is upsetting me with the alarms is I would like them to attack, you know, um, medium missiles and crams, to be honest. I don't want them going against small and flares, but I don't know how I'm going to set that up. I think I have set them up so that they only fire against, yeah, 500 um, millimeter shells or, or objects. So, like I said, you know, this, with a lucky shot, he can pretty much knock out the whole belt. But he's not getting through that belt. Also, yesterday there was a point where the shells were randomly detonating. It's good to see that they have been fixed. Those shells, you know, even without a time fuse, they were actually randomly detonating. But, yeah, there you go. Um... Our battery is very bad. It's very, very, very poor. We need, I definitely need to sort something up for that to keep the sustained, um, you know, use of lambs and our rail. Because our rail uh, with three of those barrels going, they're uh, taking about nearly 1k each, for each per shot. So that is quite a bit of a power strain. We also have this little skimming problem. It is, you know, it's quite a bit of a, a bit of a problem there because most of our shots are, are missing. 
But anyway, that is that. So please uh, remember to leave your comments and suggestions in the box in the down there. Obviously, these things are quite stupid, like the way they are. I know. I have to set something up for them. Um, hopefully, you know, you guys can give me some decent ideas, even for styling, perhaps. For that. So let us just get rid of of everything. I have to sort the timing out for that little Sam. Hope you guys like that. It's pretty well I found it pretty pretty cool. I am I am liking this quite a bit. So yeah your comments and suggestions in the box in the down there in terms of this thing and our little um bird bird baths over here. <laughs> they look like bird baths to me. So those things yeah, just, you know, ideas for styling and so on and so forth. Things, you know, for this. Either we have a pop popping up from the, from the down here. Or set up like a little towery thing. I don't know. You guys can let me know on that. That is for sure. What I would like to know mostly is for this. The armor for these. How would you set up armor for these? That is something I'd like to know. Obviously, you know, we need this, the whole shields uh, and bits and bobs for that. But we are really, really, really poor in terms of power power generation and our battery power. This is something I wasn't really thinking about when, it, when uh, I was actually building this. So, there is that. Anyways, okay, so next on the list we have two well it's actually one because i'm only going to be showing one um they are a bit different the only difference is, is the front weapons here this one we have a um a type of a gatling gun um the shell for this is quite the normal shell really this is what we're going with for that i believe it's on a 75 so that's the sort of thing we're going with for that. However, on the other side over here, this is an experiment really. It's sort of okay. It kind of works. <laughs> what this is is supposed to be a, um, a mortar really. So I'm going to set something up and I'll show you that. Okay, so with this weapon we have to have be at quite a distance away from our target for it to actually even try to fire. And that's because, as you can see, it has a very high firing arc, you know, as, as a mortar would. So the issue here is, if this target is actually turning towards us, or it's just turning around somewhere, um, we would actually be missing a hell of a lot until it straightens up and starts to go back and, you know, moving in a straight line. That then is where we will land a number of our hits. So as you can see right now, uh, we are missing a hell of a lot. And the idea is that the shells fall down onto the deck and hopefully, you know, hitting a number of the, the turret caps and therefore destroying the turrets. So we're starting to get a bit closer to our target now. We do catch up and then once it starts to turn again, we, we, we again, you know, lose, lose it pretty much and end up firing um, behind it or too wide. Now, the thing with this shell is, if you have a lot of speed, it's going to end up going up into space. And by the time it comes all the way back down again, it might get to here and the shell might just end up despawning before it even hits the target. Or, it, you know, it just wouldn't hit even the, the water level itself. It would just end up despawning. So this is quite an experimental thing. So hopefully you guys can tell me how we can actually improve on the whole mortar thing. Hopefully you guys can give me some ideas there. Um, the turret itself... So this is what we're going with. Um, we have to keep... Well, I have to keep on this one. I'm keeping the MS under 80. So the, the added rail, you know, increase, the speed increase. I'm keeping it under 80 MS. Um, so if we go any higher, like I said, that shell will end up going much more into space and it will end up despawning before it hits the target itself. This is the shell that we are going with. Um, we have one gunpowder 
So like like we said, you know, without the, the added rail speed increase, this is just doing 54 ms. So if we say like it goes to 82 ms with the added, you know, the added rail increase was 82 for example, it would end up despawning before it hits the target. So it has to be a slow shell as well. Which is one of the issues that we have with, with missing the whole target as well. So we go, I went with two stabilizer fins, it seems that to me feels the best way. I'm not saying that's the best way, it just feels the best. Uh, one solid, probably could get rid of that and add in a frag and then just bump up the, the rails um, speed increase a little bit. So that's the sort of thing that we're going with. Uh, the frags, ooh, the frags. Well, looks like I have to tweak those. I don't think I want them both on 180, that's for sure. On our triple barrel and the rear end, we are using one, the, a disruptor with a visible a visible tracer. This is just mixed in randomly within the, um, the auto loaders. We're going with, uh, I think it's two of the barrels are using the hollow point heads, which I should probably end up changing. It doesn't seem like quite a good idea having those. And then we're using a squash with, you know, these things, these bits and pieces. And that is on a 2 -bit. So that is that. On the, on this one, the other one is just, you know, a normal, like, uh, Gatling, pretty much. There's nothing special with that one. But this, like I said, it's an experiment, really. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys have some ideas that I could try out to try to improve this. To have it actually, you know, really increase the speed, the time from there to here. Because that's the issue that one, that I'm having. It's the the time it's the shell is taking to get to the target. And I don't want to fire it just straight towards the target because, you know, as, as you've seen in probably numerous fights where your cannons, they, they hit the water surface and just, you know, pass over the target. And the actual idea for that mortar is so that the, the shell comes down onto the deck. So, you know, just right straight down onto the deck, not from the side, just straight down from the top to knock out those caps, really. And yeah, that disrupt the thing. It's always bouncing off <laughs> every time. Waste of time that one was. Stuffing a tracer on that. But yeah. Um, our lambs is probably an overkill on the lambs. Our lambs is... Some of this thing has a crap ton of armor all over the place. So we have four of these. Um... We have four of these. They're split up, so we have one, you know, to these to these nodes on the front. Um, one is split up on these three and these three, and then we have one just for these three here on this corner, and another one just for these three on this corner. I think I should probably add a couple of more um, detectors around the place. But that is that. The uh, for the lambs really the lambs I pretty much wanted them for for anti crams because this this construct is pretty damn slow even with all the bloody daddy blades in the world trying to help this push this thing along it is still quite a very slow construct I really need to get into the whole uh, steam propeller things really. Um, so I might end up making another variant of this. Uh, still got a couple of bits and pieces to sort out. As you can see, I've got a couple of holes here because I was actually working on something. This is sort of the insides. Um, down here, my god. This is all our ammo. So if we hit P, uh, our ammo, we have an air gap. To, we'll say it's like too thick in an air gap. That's all the ammo. And there's another problem with this construct is that this turret here is clipless. And therefore, every time you bring it into play, it has to reload those clips, I believe. It's not it's not keeping any shells in those um, in those clips. Um, 
quite a bit of air gaps all over the place. So I have tried to make this thing walkable. And there is something else pretty damn neat that I would like to show. Uh, okay, so this is that, that uh, turret there. So we do have a couple of bit of space in here as well. Uh, we have our batteries mixed in with our lambs. Another daily blade on the front because this thing is pretty damn nose heavy just because of this front mortar as I have armored it up with heavy armor. Um, you know, covering up the bits and pieces. Okay, so with uh, there was a couple of other bits and pieces I wanted to show you. I tried to make this uh, this construct a walkable construct in this sense. Something that you can actually walk around in fully. Uh, as you can see, we have Pinky and Perky over here. They're doing their, their bits and their bits and pieces on the on the computer screens. Um, over here, we can come out. I need to change that door. I don't like that door. And we can run all the way up here. We have a little detection thingy on a two-axis turret. Um, to go down, we can go back in, and I think we're going to end up putting a couple of stairs going down and removing this column. We do have a steam steam jenny over here. Might actually remove that one because we do have a small one at the back here. What is wrong with you? Are you in red? Oh, you're a duplicate. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, might might be able to get rid of that one. Things should keep on working without it. This is closes you. Um, over here, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Over here, as you can see, we have an ACB. Now, this thing I just noticed that once the construct is actually moving, you sort of get caught up in bits and pieces and it doesn't work. So we're going to stand here. I put a little metal plate here so we don't get pushed backwards. As you can see, it is trying to push us around a bit. Uh, we want this, and we want to say test. And as you can see, it takes us down to this level. We have another two to push us back up again. This is the engine room in here. Unfortunately, the engine room, there is no space to actually walk around in because I, I was stupid. Because <laughs> I was stupid. That's, that's, that's the answer there. We have another one over here. Um... Yeah, this one is also getting us a little, oh Christ, <laughs> a little bit stuck. Um, let's do the whole test. Can we, can I, is this, why, what, <laughs> why are you not doing anything? Um, test, oh there we go, I just didn't hit it, never mind. Um, yeah, we can't sort of like build a pathway from there to here because, because of our um, turret, you know, armor here. So we have to sort of like walk around like this, but that's the whole idea of the of the lift. Um, there's our, our engine room, as you can see. You know, I had to even bring out some of the exhaust here, and that engine most probably needs to end up being changed anyway because oh hello, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, the f what? Anyway, um yeah, that engine probably has to change because we do end up hitting the the zero power. Once all our lambs are, are being used and stuff. So there is that issue. These stairs, they do not like us that much. So again, you know, we've got a little thing there just to keep us somewhat in place. And we come up and we can go through. And that is down. Excellent. So we want to go up. Like that. So yeah, try to keep this thing walkable, you know, try to do something a little bit different, you know, from my end for once, because I, I usually don't make, you know, walkable-ish, constructy things. Um, this guy over here, he seems to be having one of those little punk haircut things. Uh, a couple of mimics, I haven't gone too, too far with the mimics, actually I've hardly used any mimics at all, just that, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah. Hopefully you guys can actually, you know, tell me, uh, leave me some decent ideas on the whole mortar thing. Because I would really love to be able to patch that thing up to make it actually work a bit better, at least. You know, at least increase the, the actual hit rate itself. Anyway, I've been blabbering on too, too much. Time to get back into the campaign and uh, go and kill some stuff and things. Okay, so, remember this tile where I forgot to save? Well, we're gonna get rid of that. Unfortunately, we can't bring in the flagship just yet because I'm having a bit of even with the submarine and my two little flyers. I'm having a little bit of issues uh, with the breadboard and target prioritization. Uh, they're not playing well with each other at the moment. But the fix should have been sorted out already. It's just, you know, the matter of just waiting for it to be... Uh, excuse me. 
<laughs> what the balls was... What the... What? Uh, okay. Well, that was that. That was... <laughs> that was uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of issues with the breadboard and... Um, Target prioritization, like sometimes if you have the target, well not sometimes, you have target prioritization and you're using the whole getting the information of your target thing. After killing a target, uh, you end up, you know, still, it's still showing that it's marking down that there is a target. When there isn't, so there is that. Um, and there's a couple of other bits and pieces that are happening with the breadboard. So the currently the submarine itself, its its uh, periscope is always you know out, and it's not really behaving as it was. So you know there's a couple of bits you know that need to be well that have been addressed. It's just you know waiting for the whole uh, the whole the whole little updates to to hit really. Hopefully I've uh, put shields on <laughs> on the turret. Need to get, oh great yes I need to make those uh, transparent. Don't I? Oops. So looks like things are going well. Uh, we have the I need to probably sort your range out, my good friend, and say please attack you know the closest little farts first. But good oh God, um, yes. Yes, glass, it doesn't really um, protect you that much, does it? <laughs> yeah, that's totally it. Because I was also being hit, uh, if I was standing in the middle of the little fortress, I was also being hit as well and dying somehow. Um, Good sir, could you please target that Engaging now. first? Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank oh, I thank you very much. I don't know why I was mostly interested in the stuff over there when these guys were much more, you know, in your face kind of thing. But I haven't gave these guys a decent trial run just yet, and as you can see, you know, we do have some issues. I probably should put a constraint on that because that has just sort of messed things up. So I'll be doing that after this battle. And as you can see, you know, our fire rate has really, really dropped down due to the whole clipless, as we're going, you know, uh, clipless uh, autoloaders there. Which is a damn shame. I probably should try to add um, some ammo generators, generators, I guess. But, yeah. So yeah, there's a couple of tweaks and a couple of bits and pieces that we need to, that I need to sort out. As you can see, you know, the 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 large cannon. Well, that's the only thing that it, that it can point at, I guess. Um, let us do this again. Engaging Let's now. Get the little guys. Hmm. There we go. That's one. Let's get the other one. Now. And that's the other one. Very good. Now, please do not go on land. <laughs> do not be the submarine going on land. Yeah. So definitely have to create a new turret for the for the rear end that uses clips, because this isn't good at all. Okay, so we're going to take in one Atlas, one a paddle gun, and a sledge, I believe. Yep. So again, our missiles are going off. I believe I've got them... Yeah, because I've got those set up on an ACB as they're over here. Uh, on a spin block, really. So they're being fired via an ACB. Uh, what I think I should do is saying if the target is at a certain altitude rather than if there's a target at a certain distance like I've had it before. And again we're picking the thing furthest away, Engaging now. which Engaging is now. bugging me. How is our little boat doing? With all the uh, spammage from that little paddle gun. 
we seem to be keeping up. As you can see, our engine power has gone down to zero. But um, I think we might be okay with those two steam genies, you know, just turning on at 100% once our batteries go down a bit. Oh dear, he's really far away. Okay, so we're going to go up against one Ransack and two Corsairs. Hopefully this fight is going to be a bit interesting. It's definitely interesting with our missiles, that is for sure. <laughs> now I need, to, I need to sort something out there, I think. I think something is has really gone wrong over there. Oh wow, we have a lot of little islands dotted around the place. Um, this could be a problem. I'll tell you what we should actually do is do You're that and say now, do now. this. Moving now, moving now. My good friend. Perhaps. Perhaps. Are we scraping along now? We just made it. Just made it. Hopefully we can make this turning as well. Oh damn, we're getting bits and pieces blown off, aren't we? Looks like our shield is failing, our, sh our power is failing. Um, don't know why, we got plenty of battery power there. It's a little bit, you know, upsetting to see that, considering all of that battery power. Don't the, uh, don't the uh, shields use battery power? So what I'm thinking of doing is actually upgrading this just to single, you know, three, but single, um, you know, 500, 500 millimeter uh, gauge on that, to be honest, and go with, you know, obviously auto loaders, get some clips in there. If we continue to have ammo issues, then I'll probably install a couple of the ammo processors. We shall see. But yeah, these guys didn't really stand, you know, they didn't really pose that much of a threat. And there you go, there's another one out of the way. So hopefully you guys will also tell me which uh, infection should we go up against next. White Flyers or the Onyx Watch. I was, you know, going probably end up going for the Onyx Watch if nobody. Okay, so let's see this battle. How are things going to go? Why are we not moving? Because I am an idiot as always. <laughs> Don't miss Alza. I have no idea what is up with, with that right now. I've got no clue. But remember, we are on Div Test. My god, there's a lot of APS rounds. I don't like APS rounds that much, considering our shields are quite uh, weak. And once our lambs start going, our shields can end up failing us as well. So the engine, I think I'm going to have to get rid of what I have and try to make something better. Because it looks like also the shields, they do not... Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. We've... Uh, yes. That isn't good. Uh, it looks like our shields, they don't run off battery power. For some reason. It's like you have a load of battery power, but I always I usually see my... Uh, um, shields start flickering. So, my God, that frag spam is annoying. It is annoying as, as okay, hell. Could you please get rid of that thing? Honestly. But we can take a couple of hits. Mind you, that did get a little bit wrecked. That turret did. Yeah, that frag spam, it's really, really, really bugs me. <laughs> 
Yes, it's a problem when, you know, having a limited bit of, of space for the engine in there. And as you can see, look, there goes our stuff it's flickering away. Our battery is more than half full. So I really don't know, you know, why they, why they don't work with batteries, to be honest. The walrus, the walrus is this. So yes, hopefully good people can leave me a comments and suggestions as to how to improve stuff and things on this on this construct. More so for the for the, for the mortar as well. That mortar thing definitely needs definitely needs something just to I don't know just to try to. You know, make the shell of the time from our ship to the to the to the target. You know, to decrease that time. Really, that's the, that's the the issue with that weapon. But remember, we are currently on the death test, so you know, there's going to be a couple of bits and bobs that I'm not going to be working 100%. But the uh, the actual uh, update itself has brought a number of good stuff with us. Obviously, you know we've got the multi-threading now. There's a couple of ACB functions as well. Uh, we've got good old Hector there, our little mannequin, and there's there's a number of other things. There's loads of other things. It's in the patch notes, so you know it's all good stuff, really. And the the performance increase is absolutely amazing. The the, the an epic difference, an epic difference in, in terms of performance as well. But unfortunately, this damn ship seems a little bit dull in terms of firepower, doesn't it? Because, 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 because look at that fire rate. It has gone up, up, up Poops Creek, really. That should be firing a little bit over, you know, a shell per second. So that is one issue there, right there, is the clipless auto loaders. So anyway, if you have liked what you've seen, please remember to smash that like and subscribe button like they owe you money. As always, you know, your comments and suggestions are more than welcome. And a epic thank you to everyone there who has gotten the channel up to over just a little over 800 subs, which is absolutely awesome. Very good. Really loving that. So yes, hopefully you guys can leave me some ideas, you know, on this construct. Um, perhaps what shell types to use for this rear cannon. As we have three fire pieces, you know, there could be a mix of, of three three shells, really, on that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I know it's been probably a little bit of a, too much of a talky-talky one because I was showing you the the two sh the, the new ships and the, the new fort. So hopefully you guys, you know, can leave me some more ideas and stuff. But for now, I'm going to leave it here. So I will catch you all on the next one.